pada pup putu tret pup pa wadu pada didi didop pop du da examen pup put pop pup pup it's a one of knowledge is the podcast you're listening to pup pup examen pup pup put pup pup and i hope you like examen to well every day we're quarantine and we have to stay inside listening to a white man do a jamaican accent Is this the problematic or is it the only way that you can sing a reggae song? I leave it up to you. It's Ammon. It's Ammon is the main Dodger podcast. It's Ammon of knowledge. And I hope you like this Ammon too. Have a day, have a day, ho. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've just been cancelled. No, uh, I haven't. Not that I know of, anyway. So, welcome to uh, episode 12. I want to give a shout out to um, Ashleen1991, who sent me a, a lovely message saying she's enjoying the podcast, and she suggested that I could sing Jamming by Bob Marley, uh, because it would be very easily adapted to my name. And you know what? She was right, and I think you've just heard it there, that she was absolutely 100% right. Uh, I'm recording this podcast from the bedroom, <laughs> so relax, guys. Don't get too hot and bothered. I'm just sitting on the bed. I'm fully clothed. The bed is made. There's a new sheet on the bed. It's all good. I'm looking at the window. I would say the curtains are open, but there are no curtains in this apartment. And that's not me, that's um, that's Cara's doing. My beloved uh, wife-to-be, Cara. She basically, I said, look, we've got to put up curtains in this place. And she was like, no, I don't want curtains. I want the moon to be seen and I want to see the moon. Uh, which was an odd thing to say. Um, I mean, I was going to say put up curtains just for those moments where you want privacy. You know, where you want to, like, bounce on the bed, jump on the bed naked. Uh, but she was. She said, no, if I'm jumping on the bed naked, the moonlight has to be cascading across my skin. So, I mean, I, I, look, I just left it at that because, you know, we're, we're locked down together. You know, you, you got to pick your battles in relationships as uh, the old saying goes. It's already a saying. Uh, I want to give another shout out to JC Wu Tang ninety two, who sent me an Instagram massage, uh, saying they're enjoying the podcast. Thank you very much. So two shout outs. I'll give some more shout outs tomorrow. Gonna pace out the shout outs. Now, right off the bat, guys, there's a jury update. Uh, my father has been uh, corresponding with me through emails, and I think he he knows that. Because he's been listening and he's been, uh, not that his emails have gotten d- different, they've just gotten longer. Now, he sent me a, basically a rebuttal email to uh, episode 11 because I kind of casually mentioned that priests, some priests, some priests like to fuck children. And while that's undeniably true, uh, and I think what I was more um, upset with and more concerned about was the fact that not only were these priests fucking children and abusing children, that the Vatican knew about it and was covering it up. So it's more, it's the cover-up as well. as the, I mean, obviously the paedophilia is bad, but it's the, the covering up is, is terrible. So Dad sent me an email yesterday evening. Here's the email. It's a long one. Hi, Ed. Listen to number 11. We are having the same problem with some people not obeying the rules. They are not all teenagers. It is all ages. So a jury does not discriminate when it comes to cunts. If you watch the news on RT1 plus 1 at around 7.45, Burr is in the news. Um, We don't have the channels. New paragraph. I would have felt the same about the shit stepper. (laughs) <laughs> that's good to know 
uh, we're on the same page. I mean, he did raise me. He he instilled morals in me, whereby uh, he would feel the same regarding shit steppers. He come to shit stepper, murderer. He's a literal gangster, murderer. Stepping on the doggy poo poo, samara. Go around the corner, shit stepper. You got those nice trainers. They've got the shit on theirs. You got to wash it off. Or you're going to have a shit dry waffle. Uh, okay, next line. Sometimes it feels a waste of... Sometimes it feels a waste to do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it does feel like a waste to do the right thing. But I tell you what. You know, I was raised to be uh, polite and please and thank yous and respect people and, you know, open doors for people. And regardless if they thank you or not, because generally they don't. And I'm not surprised because, like, I've stepped back from sh- if I go into a shop, someone's tr- someone's trying to walk in when I'm trying to walk out. I step back the six feet and let them through. And most of the time, sometimes they thank. Sometimes they say, thank. And I go, huh? They go, Thank, or if they're from the Midlands, tank, because uh, we've got a problem with our THs. This, that, them, there, these, them, those. That's where the motherfucking TH goes. Um, a little rhyme for you to just to uh, express uh, how we say things. Like if we pointed at something, because I'm not a, I'm not a culty. I mean, I am a culty. I'm from Offaly, but I'm from a town in Offaly, and growing up, I mean, we had a one-screen cinema. For Christ's sakes, that's not a like that's not some sort of muck savage, one cow town where everyone queues up to have a go on the cow. That's like a proper proper town. Um, why am I giving out about it? Um, but the accent is is you know I I don't have occasionally if I'm you know a little bit drunk or whatever the 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 th might kind of lose its way a little bit. But I'd never go, like, a, a townie would say, you know, look at that over there. Uh, a culture would say, look at that over there. So it's a subtle linguistic difference there. Or a subtle linguistic difference there. So, okay. Jerry continues. The laws on littering were always poorly enforced. Okay. Um... This is obviously a hot button topic for uh, Jerry Salmon, who's you know always had his eye on the littering laws and the changes to the littering laws. Not something I've personally been interested in myself, but I I hate it when people litter. There's no there's no need for it. There's no you know just have a bit of fucking respect. We all live on this uh, spinning rock, hurtling through space, full of infected people. Then he he gets all dirty Harry on my ass here with the next line. Nobody wants a police state, but sometimes people need to be made to do right. Which kind of sounds a bit, uh, yeah, a bit dirty Harry, sort of. Uh, Nobody wants a police state, but sometimes people need to be made to do right. Um, so, <laughs> so the next line is, He's gotten this is halfway through the email, so now he gets into the church stuff. So, here he goes. I feel as you do about the abuse in the church, but I think it is time to give it a rest. There were and are some very good people in the church who are sorely grieved by what went on. There was a lot of badness in the world, and it is not all church or religion related. Yeah, but part of it. As in the past, hypocrites will use religion as a cloak to hide their true selves. Mm, getting very Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets here. Hey, what's that, what's that man over there? Is he a bad man? A bad religious man? Hmm, I can't, I, I can't make it out because he's wearing a cloak. Um, then, power and money are what motivates evil. Hmm... Not all people of power or wealth are bad, but they are sometimes removed from reality. Well, yeah. And then he signs off with, uh, he says, I will call you later. Regards to Cara. As Charlie Lansborough said, what colour is the 
Ellipses, ellipses, ellipses. Kiss, kiss. That's an old Charlie Lansbury song. Charlie Lansbury was a sort of... Uh, he was kind of like... Is he still alive? I don't know. He was always... He appeared on the scene as a sort of a fully formed late 50s cowboy hat wearing, long bearded sort of Ireland's answer to Willie Nelson. But if Willie Nelson didn't smoke weed every day and couldn't write a song to save his arse. Charlie Lansborough had, look, he's referring to What Colour Is The Wind, which is a Charlie Lansborough song. What colour is the wind? Is it yellow, brown or grey? Uh, you know, like asking those. It's kind of like if Bob Dylan was an idiot, he'd write, you know, because he wrote How Many Roads Must A Man Walk Down, which was a sort of a rhetorical song lyric. He invented the rhetorical song lyrics, like, um, which continued and were influenced. I mean, you hear him in all, just off the top of my head, uh, tell me why. Uh, that's a rhetorical lyric. Um, ain't nothing but a heartbreak. Tell me why he ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why he, I never want to hear you say, I want the Charlie Lansborough way. Wow, what an absolute banger. I uh, hope, you, hope you enjoyed that. So yeah, listen, okay, that's fair enough, Jerry. Uh, you make some good points here. Um, he's basically telling me to give it a rest, stop going on about it, because my dad is a religious man, and I kind of, you know, we've got a jokey sort of relationship where um, I make jokes at him and about his beliefs, and he takes them, and that's it. As in, you know, he'll go to Mass, uh, and I'll come back and say, how was Mass, how was the sermon? Anything about the child fucking? And he'll go, oh, fuck, I want to live that bloody leave it out. Um, and it's a kind of a case of, uh, yeah, like I was thinking back, I was thinking on, you know, positive religious, uh, people in my life. And like, we used to go on these, uh, retreats to like, I don't know. I remember going on a retreat to fucking Ross Gray or somewhere or some, we were just in a building. We're in like some sort of, uh, rec center. And these two kind of bearded hippies would like sing songs and we'd have like meditation, which was just basically sit in a room and shut the fuck up for half an hour so we can go, you know, have a whiskey. I think that's what they were doing. But, you know, they weren't very religious types. And, you know, then, of course, you have guys like uh, uh, Bishop Casey, who was a famous, he was a Galway bishop who in the 90s... uh, had an affair with uh, a married... No, she wasn't married. He had, an, he, he, had an, he had an affair. He had an affair with a woman. Who was he cheating on? God. So God was like, uh, what's, go- what's going on, Bishop Casey? Where are you off to? He said, oh, I'm just going for a walk. Hmm. You smell nice. You put cologne on. You never put cologne on for me anymore. I invented cologne for you, Amen. That's what his name was, Eamon. So he had uh, relations with uh, a woman, which was shocking because, uh, you know, he's a bishop. If anyone else did it, it would be just like, oh, okay. It, you know, it was all consensual. And then he had a baby because obviously he's Catholic. He's not going to use a condom. Um, he's a bishop. <laughs> Bishops don't use rubbers. And she had a baby and the baby grew up and it was a boy baby. And then the boy baby became a man baby or a, a man-child baby. And he wanted to reconnect with him, and he was like, oh, fuck off, I'm a bishop. And it was a big scandal. And then she was on the Late Late Show. Oh, God, it was, oh, ho. Oh. And then there's another guy called Michael Cleary. Now, Michael Cleary, Father Michael Cleary, was, he was not a bishop, he was just a father, lower rank. Um, And he actually came to Burr, and I remember going to, the rugby club, that's where it was on. It was on in the local rugby club where they used to have dances on Stevens's night. And uh, we all went. I think we were about, God, I don't know, I think it was about 15, 16 maybe. You know, getting to that point where I'm sort of going, yeah, fuck rules and society or whatever. I was, you know, I was rebellious, but I was, uh, 
I was also open to new ideas and, uh, you know, he was like a cool priest and he was like talking to us about cool stuff and he seemed sort of genuine and whatever. And uh, it turns out he was uh, having sex with a woman as well. Okay, guys, we're going to take a little break here and I'll be back shortly and you will be listening to me when I am back on the pod. And we're back. So, and it was such a shock. It's just like, it's the most normal thing in the world. And it's contradictory because the Bible says, you know, go forth and multiply, be fruitful and multiply, have many, many children. Uh, but if you want to be a priest, that's no fucking. And I kind of don't trust that. I don't trust someone, I don't trust a man who signs up to wear a dress and not fuck. You know, like, who signs up for a life of no fucking? There's something going on there. There's something wrong with that person. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's terrible. Uh, It obviously, you know, you can't be, like, being married to Jesus is fine. As long as, you know, you get a little every uh, month or something. Like, once a month or something like that. If if you got some sort of uh, hands-free kind of uh, spontaneous orgasm you know, delivered from on high. I don't know. Like, these are just, I'm just spitballing ideas here. Now, Father Cleary, yeah, he was, he was fucking someone else. Someone else. He was having sex with a woman. And uh, I don't know if he had a kid, but uh, my dad was pointing out uh, something interesting about that was that it was obviously shocking that these men of the cloth, men of God, celibate, holy men were having relations with women. Father Cleary was having sex with his housekeeper. Uh, obviously, you know, the bishop was higher up, so he had to, you know, he had to go a little bit better than that. So he went, he had sex with an American woman, which in the 90s was like, you know, uh, even, you know, it was like impressive because, uh, you know, we didn't really know that many Americans, uh, least of all Americans to have sex with. But dad was saying he didn't, you know, he didn't mind them having sex with women. Father Cleary, Father Michael Cleary, or uh, Bishop, uh, Eamon, I said Brennan, Bishop Brennan, <laughs> Bishop Eamon Casey, not Bishop Brennan from uh, Father Ted, but his problem was Jerry's problem was that they didn't own up to it, they didn't admit to it, they neglected. Like he had a son, uh, Bishop Casey had a son, and just you know didn't have any contact with him. They they didn't own up to their responsibilities. They were shirking their responsibilities. And he thought that was worse because at the end of the day, they're just men. They're not special. In, they're special in the in the sense that they have they wear dresses and they've signed up for a life of no fucking. But apart from that, they're not special. Now, I want to give a shout out to an actual, real, sound, nice priest, uh, Father Pat Gilbert, who was the chaplain in our secondary school. And he was young. He had a beard. He was handsome. I remember one of my friends accidentally walked in on him when he was naked uh, in the changing rooms uh, in the gym in school. And he sort of, well, I mean, he had a towel on, but he was naked under the towel. And uh, this was like the height of uh, forbidden fruit because all the girls thought he was he was lovely. And he was he was lovely. But he was lovely on the inside, too. He was a very uh, lovely, softly spoken, intelligent man. I remember having a pint with him uh, in uh, one of the pubs in in Burr, Kelly's pub. And uh, he actually, because in in our school, we would have a musical every year, the school musical. Uh, So the second years and the fifth years, basically the years that weren't exam years, would do the musical. The older fifth year students would play the leads and then the second year students would be, you know, the chorus and the townspeople of Oklahoma or the the Jews that didn't sing in Fiddler on the Roof or whatever it was. I was in Fiddler on the Roof when I was in second year and I ended up uh, putting on a fake beard uh, every night because it, it ran for like, we did like five nights the whole school would get involved. We'd be in the, the school gym and the, the woodwork teachers and the students would get um, together 
and they'd build the stage from scratch and then you'd have you know the lights would come in so the the crew was all students and teachers and the cast was all students and sometimes teachers were in the cast because we did Jesus Christ Superstar not in my year now I went to see it I was still I think I was in like uh, I think I was in third year I think it was junior third year and uh, Father Pat Gilbert played Jesus Christ in Jesus Christ Superstar Jesus Christ Superstar who the fuck do you think you are son of God and uh, you know and he's up on the cross pretty much naked as he would have appeared to uh, one of my friends who walked in on him in a towel in the changing rooms but he's up wearing a nappy on the cross, you know, dying. And I'm like, I was thinking, and it was pretty, like, he was a great performance and he was a great singer. And it was so amazing to see because he was such a softly spoken man. And then to see him playing Jesus Christ, his favorite character, it'd be like if I got to play Chewbacca or something, you know, like uh, one of, you know, one of the most loved most well-known uh, characters in all of fiction. And, uh, yeah, Father Pat was, he was, you know, he was a good priest. He he had a good head in his shoulders. I remember him saying one time to us, which uh, we're in the prayer room. And the prayer room was, it was kind of used as a jam room. Me and the guys would go in and we'd jam on our acoustic guitars and we'd play all sorts of cool tunes. And he was in there as well. And I remember him saying, he was chatting to a bunch of us one day and he was saying, he said, "Let me ask you a question." And he's going to be played by Robert De Niro in this uh, in this retelling. Let me ask you a question. And we went, "Yeah." He said, "Who is the church?" And we're like, "Um, huh? Who is the church?" And we're like, "Well, the the Pope." And he's like, "Nah, the Vatican." No, no, it's not the Vatican. And we're like, uh, "The Cardinals, Cardinal Richelieu." Is that one of him? Dog Tanyon? Is that the church? No, I'll tell you who the church is. The church is the people. Because without the people, there is no church. We're like, okay. Do you want your inhaler? Thank you very much. The church is the people, and the people is the church. His voice cleared. Uh, But he was right, because, you know, without people... There is no church. It's just a bunch of men in dresses going around not fucking anyone. But yeah, okay. Although, if you think about it, um, when priests would go out on the missions, their mission being to uh, brainwash other nations who were perfectly happy believing in nothing or believing in whatever they were believing in, and going, no, you need to believe in a sky boss. Mm, There's a boss in the sky. Um, and they would take wives because they would, and basically the excuse was, you know, well, I have to take a wife because, uh, you know, I don't get any respect from any of the other villagers if I'm not uh, a man with a wife. So my hands are tied. I've got no choice in the matter. And I'm, I remember thinking when I heard that, I was like, yeah, you knew exactly what you were doing. You were like, a couple of years into the job and you're going, holy shit, I've signed up to wear a dress and not have sex for the rest of my life. Oh no, what have I done? I know, I'll go to the missions. Mm, God, I'll have to, guess I'll have to take a wife out there. Oh, well, it's a heavy burden to bear, but I'll bear it. Um, I better consummate it as well because mm, I don't want to have a dud marriage. In the eyes of God. <laughs> but I do want to mention my um, my grand-aunt. My mother's father's sister, uh, Auntie Madeline, who was a nun. Yes, there was a nun in my family. And I would, I, I would say now she was a very reserved, quiet woman. And I never really... I wouldn't have gotten to know her that well I'd gotten to I, I would have known her as well as I'd known my granddad and she died when I was uh young enough in my in my teens um and she was she would have been in her 
I don't know, late 50s, early 60s. It's kind of hard to judge how old someone is when you're young because when you're young, everyone seems much older. And the older people seem like, you know, once you hit 50, that's like being an 80-year-old person to a teenager. So uh, she lived in Waterford in a big mansion uh, that was left to the nuns by the man who owned it. And when I was a kid, I used to think, oh, some like some fancy American millionaire left this gaff to all these nuns. But thinking back on it now, it was definitely a kind of a stately kind of home. So it was probably some Protestant landowner. Uh, but fair, yeah, fair play to him. You know, he, le- he left it to the nuns. And there were some lovely nuns there. They were really, really nice people. Like they were actual, you know, human beings. Because the uh, they turned the place into... Uh, a convalescence home for um, for the elderly, and also it was a hospice for people who were dying. And I found out afterwards from one of the younger nuns who was there uh, when she died. And we went down for the funeral, and she was taken care of. She died with the nuns, and uh, turns out her job, which I didn't know, was people who were terminally ill she would get into bed with them and comfort them as they died which is you know an unbelievably uh difficult thing to to do but also it's probably quite rewarding and sort of i don't know humbling in a way but it's nice that someone is there with you when you're dying you know but she was very very quiet and very reserved and uh, she wasn't like fire and brimstone. There none of those kind of horrible nuns. I remember my mum telling me about some nun. She was caught with her, her brother, John. And uh, this nun literally made them wash their mouth out with soap and water. Which is just fucking horrible. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't any of those nuns. Nice nuns. And some nuns uh, that uh, that I've known... To all the nuns I've known before Who travelled in and out my door I don't want to make a habit I'd rather skin a rabbit To all the nuns I've known before So guys, uh, this is the end of the episode Uh, I'll be back in a couple of days Um, I'm going to set off on a little adventure today. I'm going to walk around to my old house and uh, talk to my housemates uh, from the garden uh, for a while. But I'm going on a a quest for cigarette papers. I like to smoke uh, licorice papers. They're brown papers. They're kind of sweet. They don't taste like licorice because I actually don't like licorice. So, um, yeah. That's what I'm going. So it's in a an off license near where I used to live. So it's about a forty minute walk. So I'm going to set off, uh, buy a whole load of licorice papers, and then swing by my uh, my housemates' gaff and chat to them. And I'll leave you with something my father said to me, uh, where he's talking about uh, the apostles, and he says because I was talking about the fact that priests signed up to a life of no fucking, and that's kind of weird. And he says, yeah, I don't understand that myself, sure. I mean, the apostles, they were all married. I was like, oh, yeah. He says, and th- they were grand. They didn't do things perfectly. She didn't Peter deny the uh, the boss man three times, and he still got the top job. Um, and I thought that was very funny. So, guys, um, I'm going to leave you now. And take away the very part of me Ooh, no, Eddie, please don't go Bum, 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 bum Ooh, no, I'll need you to stay I'll be back in two days Bye, 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 bye